right now, so we're gonna get it going now. Stephanie, okay. hi Stephanie Murphy, how are you doing over there in Spokane? Doing well, how are you? I am doing well. So there's a pretty ghost spawn here, guys. Stephanie's my daughter this time. She's a real estate agent with four degrees north in Spokane, Washington, and she's very enthusiastic about Spokane. She talks to me about it a lot because she believes the market's really great. And today we're going to talk to her about why. Now, she's got a pretty in-depth background, I will tell you. Stephanie's worked at, with a, a lender or two in her background, so she knows financing and all of that. And she's been a real estate agent for how long now, Stephanie? Um, two and a half years. Two and a half years. And I've done a few deals with her and her clients, and I know she knows what she's talking about. So, Steph, why don't you tell us a little bit about Spokane and why you're so excited about it? Okay. So, thank you, everyone, for joining. I appreciate it, um, first of all. And so for me, a little bit about me is I actually was a lender also before I became a real estate agent. Um, so I have that knowledge as well in my background, which is super helpful. Um, but what I love so much about the uh, possibilities of investing in Spokane is because it's a large city on the eastern side of Washington um, that allows you to be able to purchase at a really good price point um, that makes it definitely more possible and advantageous to uh, maximize the amount of return on investment that you'll get. Um, and how we do that is because obviously prices over here are not as high as some of the other um, large cities uh, within Washington. And what we have found too um, is the growth that's happening in Spokane also um, really helps to play into that just simply because um, people are finding out that Spokane is quite the little gem of a city and want to live here. Um, and so actually, interestingly enough, um, there's over 42% of the population actually rents versus owns in Spokane. So that's really good for new investors <laughs> if you're looking to expand your portfolio. So Stephanie, what does that mean for the vacancy rates over in Spokane right now with rental properties? Do you know? Um, it's actually less than 1%. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. Um, waiting list of renters. Yes. Yeah. Actually, a lot of places do have a waiting list. Um, so it, it's, and that can be multifamily, that can be um, individual houses, that's apartments. There's just um, a lot of people that are interested in uh, renting versus buying, or they're trying to rent until they can buy. So there's a lot of different scenarios. Um, one of the bigger things too, that I think drives such a higher number of renters versus um, home owners here is because of what draws people to Spokane. Um, we have a lot of different universities that are, either in Spokane or in the surrounding cities. Um, so a lot of people are coming here to go to school and then end up staying here, which is um, you know, what we find a lot too. So uh, there's a lot of different things that cause people to want to rent in Spokane. Well, I know the lifestyle of Spokane, because the guys I've lived there a couple of years ago, many years ago, and go back there quite occasionally, obviously, because we have family there. And I know the lifestyle there is very attractive to a lot of different kinds of people, isn't it? Yes, very much so. Um, the cost of living over here is, you know, a lot less than what it would be if you're to be living in Seattle or Everett, Marysville, any of those surrounding areas. Um, and there's not the amount of traffic as well. So it's awesome um, for other people too. So when they come here and they think, uh, we have a lot of people that will come from like Seattle or even Oregon and California that are actually now uh, moving to Spokane because you get so much with what you can buy, but then also there's so much to do around here as well. And that's any season, honestly. So I moved over here in 2005 from the west side of the state and I've never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> so Steph, before I ask you some specific real estate related kind of numbers questions, what's the projection for Spokane for growth rate? Do you have any idea? Um, yes, actually. So <laughs> the projected growth rate from 2017 was 4.18%. Um, and that's a, that's a good consistent growth. What was it last year? Do you have any idea? I'm sorry, that one, one more time. That was last year. Okay. I, yes, sorry. that was last year, right. which I know we're on track to at least maintain that, if not increase that a little bit as well. Um, and as far as like the population too, so Spokane County itself encompasses a lot of different cities, um, that are small within that. So like Spokane city itself has uh, like 
202,000 for the population, whereas Spokane County in its entirety has 506,000. Okay. 2017 reported numbers. So there's also a lot of um, little cities or little towns that are close by uh, that play into those numbers as well. Okay, so Steph, I, we, I know we have two different kinds of people, at least maybe more, but let's say we have investors that are wanting information about Spokane and first time home buyers that are wanting mm -hmm. information. So let's tackle the first time home buyers first. What, what are the price points that they're talking about? What's it cost to buy a home in the different areas of Spokane? Um, so your average price point is gonna be, um, I will actually, the home value is around 185,000, and this is reporting from 2018. Um, the purchase price, I'm gonna say, that would be your tax assessed, excuse me. So your purchase price is probably gonna be around 220 to 230,000, and that's gonna be a decent sized house. Um, <laughs> far different from what I'm sure a lot of other people are used to, especially over there. I can tell um, you that from the west side of the state and from our clients in Hawaii, that, those are, that's an astounding number. Yes. So, and that would be um, for a very comfortable house, honestly. So, two hundred fifty thousand. If somebody were to come over here, you would be, you know, in at least probably a two thousand square foot home with on a quarter acre lot um, in good condition. So, it definitely makes it great for somebody who's looking to come and buy their first house and be established. And that's just obviously, um, you know, what I would say the average is. You can still find so many houses. Um, in Spokane or even in some of the surrounding areas for under that 200,000 price point. And in fact, I'm gonna have a listing going live next week that'll be 195. And there's lots of updates and stuff that have um, been done to that house. So it's- That's amazing. So speak to the fact that, now we're used to commuting over in the Seattle area a long ways so that we can get a cheaper house. So what's a commute look like in Spokane to go outside and get that little, the little more acreage, a little less price, and how long does it take to get to wherever? So I myself am one of those people that I like to have my space and so looking at um, a house that you know is a decent sized house for a growing family and then also to have some property it's going to take me about 30 minutes to get to downtown the heart of Spokane and that's with traffic so in the morning it's like 20 minutes maybe. <laughs> oh it's getting envious Steph and I'm telling you we're starting to like it. Yeah. All right, so I'm an investor. I'm interested in Spokane potentially because you have a 1% vacancy rate. Is that what I heard? My goodness. Yes. What, what's, what's a purchase price of a typical rental home? I suppose it's probably the same. What are the rents going for now? What kind of factors do you look at when you're talking to investors about rental properties? Um, so that also definitely um, makes it much better for an investor who's looking to invest here because there's such a wide range of variety of what you can get. And also on top of that, um, our, your competition is not as high as what it would be, like say in Seattle or even in Hawaii. Um, so I've had investors literally pick up properties anywhere from 70,000 and then they buy, renovate, and then they were going to sell, but then they hold it because they can retain all of the money that they just put into it from their rent. So, um, one of my investors, he just bought this spring, it's a triplex, um, and he ended up having the two front units, he renovated those, and they're two bedroom, one bathroom, I wanna say 850 square feet, and those are renting out at 850 a month. They pay all of their utilities and stuff as well. Um, the purchase price for that particular triplex, I wanna say is 195 is what his purchase price was. So your return on investment for those are, are really good. <laughs> So he bought a $195,000 three-unit property and he's getting 2500 in excess of $2,500 a month rent on the three units. Um, he could be, yes, except for he's a really nice investor who didn't kick out one of his um, renters. So he's know. getting a, a screaming deal of 600 a month. So that's way know. below the market rent, which we tend to find um, actually in most of the deals that I have for my investors, if it's not vacant and they are currently occupied, there's a large room increase to bring up to the current market rent and i would say your average rental income is anywhere from 900 to 1200 a month it's probably going to be that average and that's wow. going to be a pretty standard two bedroom one bathroom maybe two bathrooms type of a unit so stephanie did you mention just a little bit ago that you, there was like seventy thousand dollar purchase price property yeah yep really? um yeah so and i mean what are they like talk to us about those 
so that one, um, it depends on, you know, how involved you want to be. So whether you can subcontract these, you know, houses out and have the work be done, or you can take the time and come over here and do it yourself. That's what he chose to do. Uh, with that one, it was simply just going in and, you know, doing an update of the kitchen and an update of the bathroom and, you know, painting and putting in, you know, carpet. And he painted the exterior, didn't need it, you know, updating for electrical or plumbing or anything like that. So it's pretty cosmetic rehabbing that we're doing um, that I believe at the end of it, he was only into it 25,000. Okay. So 75 plus 25. So he's into it for a hundred thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. What kind of rent on that one? So that one, and actually, I'm sorry, he did add another bathroom to and a bedroom to that one. So it became a two bedroom one is when he first bought it. And now it's a three bedroom, two bathroom. And that one he's renting out at 1500 a month. <laughs> Those are pretty good numbers. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> really good numbers. He's one of my very, very happy clients. <laughs> bad. Um, I know you have metrics that you use to analyze a rental property when you're talking to an potential investors are interested in buying, you know, like what percentage of the purchase price and some basic things. Tell us how you analyze a rental property and what you're looking for to get a good deal for your clients. Um, so I know investors have their own spreadsheets that they like to use. So I don't really try to dive too much into numbers because I know everybody's going to want to make those as their own. But myself personally, I look for at least a 1%, um, you know, break even point. So as long as their rents can be 1%, of what the purchase price would be, you're normally going to be sitting pretty good as far as that return on investment because obviously then you want to factor in property management expenses, um, a potential vacancy rating, which I know most people do five to six percent, but I mean, even three percent would be giving you some extra room as well. So one percent of the purchase price minimum is what I'm going to say is my minimum of what I look for. Okay, very good. And so for that out-of-state investor who's interested in purchasing property but needs management and all of that, what's the solution there for those kinds of people? So um, I'm with four degrees as far as the buying and selling side, but we also do have our property management division, which is, um, as I just confirmed today, uh, we are now the number one property management company in all of Spokane. So it's really nice because if you choose to use me as your realtor for your investment purchases, then I then just partner you with one of my partnered um, property managers. Um, so Joel Tampion is the owner. And then you basically would start your portfolio with them and then they manage it. And then if you decide you want to offload any of those, then it comes right back to me. So it's a really seamless process that we have to keep it all in-house. All right. So Steph, I'm going to, um, take some of the questions that are coming in and offer those to me before I switch gears and go to the next thing. So one of the okay. people here wants to know great returns, likes that. You have bigger multifamily apartments with those kinds of returns? Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, those numbers? Let's say it's a five unit or above or, or how many units and, and what do they look like? So, and actually I just went and looked at one um, this morning that I did a FaceTime with. So also just so you know, for uh, you folks that are interested in looking at Spokane, if you're not able to get over here and personally look, um, I myself really like to FaceTime or use Facebook Messenger and I'll do a visual video walkthrough of properties I'm looking at it for my clients. Um, but so for that one, it's eight units and that one, um, it's a generating that 1% return as well, but there's definitely some room to increase the rents to make it to what the current market rent would be. So. Um, that one has a purchase price of seven hundred and fifty thousand for eight units, and those um, it also includes a four car garage as well, plus carport parking for all of the tenants too. So good. Yeah. So to expand on that, um, the the question here is: Is there a general cap rate that you use when you're looking at turnkey apartments? This is a multifamily investor question. You can tell, and what's the cap rate typically that you would use over there for an apartment building that people would expect? or stabilized apartments? Um, honestly, I'm not quite sure what the cap rate would be. I personally don't normally deal with cap rates because again, investors use such a wide range of numbers that they use. Um, but I mean, I could definitely look into that and figure out an exact number to be okay. more precise. That's fair, I know it varies. And so one of the questions that I kind of get from different people, Stephanie, is um, if there's any particular areas around Spokane or Spokane County that you think are diamonds in the rough that are great investment opportunities in that. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Um, 
honestly, I would say all of Spokane is going to be that diamond in the rough because there's so much that's going on um, in Spokane as far as growth wise. So Kendall Yards is probably the um, the biggest and newest fad of them all, which would be like it's just a little bit north of the river um, in the heart of downtown Spokane. And it used to be a part of town that, you know, wasn't as clean or as nice. And the way that they have just completely taken over it, it's amazing. So um, it now has some really great um, restaurants and stores, uh, different retail fronts. They do um, the farmer's market in the summer every Wednesday. And it's a place that people love to come and gather in now. And they also did a lot of development as far as like condos and houses that are right there on the bluff of the river. And some of those condos are going for anywhere from 350000 to 600000 plus. Wow. Okay. And if you of town that like, before you could pick up lots and houses. Um, in fact, I actually sold one for sixty thousand dollars. So, <laughs> and now it's you know if you would have bought and hold, then you would definitely be sitting on a little piece of change. So. All right, so you've got somebody's ear because they would like you to repeat the name of the neighborhood you just talked about there, Stephanie. What was the name of that? Kendall Yards. How do you spell that? K E N D A L, and then Yards is just Y A R D S. And then for the for the, the benefit of the people that don't know Spokane, where is that located in regards to the downtown area exactly? Um, so it's, I mean, if you were to take one any of the downtown exits, you're going to be, it's like five minutes north of like the heart of downtown. So Division is that main line uh, that divides your east and your west, and then Sprague is what divides your north and your south. Um, starting point. So you're maybe 15 blocks north of Sprague. So very close. So very close. It's all within walking distance. So yeah. if you wanted to walk then over to uh, the uh, Riverfront Park Mall or even Riverfront Park itself, you, it's like five, ten minutes walking distance. Good. And I know yeah. from having lived over there, the downtown area is kind of revitalized now, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's all sorts of cool things. So they actually even downtown and Riverfront Park itself. Um, have gone through and kind of revamped that as well. Um, they have a new ice ribbon that they just got done building last winter. So now in the wintertime, they have a ribbon that is just generated for outdoor ice skating. So then that way, if you have the runners, they can now ice skate on there too. And then in the summertime, it's open for roller skating. Um, they have the, uh, there's all sorts of different things to do down there. There's the carousel, the loop carousel. Um, we do pick out in the park. We also have Hoop Fest, which is the world's largest three on three basketball tournament that we host in Spokane every summer. So there's a lot of fun stuff that happens in Spokane. I've heard that. A few more questions coming in here, Stephanie. So, what's the rent growth expected to be over the next five years? What's the projections there? The rental growth, meaning yeah, growth for rental properties and the and the, and the rent and need for rental properties. Like, are there that's kind of tied to the growth rate of Spokane? Do you have any idea what that's happening over the next? Well, quarter? like I said, the, the growth rate for Spokane itself is on that trend of that four point eight percent, or I guess it's four point one eight percent. So your need and desirability for rentals, I assume, is going to follow and maintain that. That's it's just continuing to grow. And um, especially having the different universities, and then now we also have the medical schools that are also in the heart of downtown too, um, that is helping to add to all of the desires for rents because you have a lot of college students that are here. Um, they end up staying here and interning, you know, over the summer. And then, you know, eventually they'll, you know, buy a house, but you're always gonna be turning because of, you know, students and stuff coming in. So your, I would assume that our rentals are going to still hold that 40% of what the housing market is over here. So about, like I said, 50% of them are actually occupied by um, owner occupied and then 42% of that is rental. Okay, got it. Um, there's someone who wants to know about um, particular areas that might be really good for growing families, Stephanie. Any particular areas you'd recommend for that? A family? Or <laughs> Yes, um, but I will say it's I, it's definitely more so based off of each family and what their interests are, um, and I absolutely could guide them. You know, I really like to get to know uh, my clients, whether it's an investor or even a single family purchase, um, to know what their interests are, and then I can kind of help guide them to where 
there's going to be stuff that's around them that fits that. I myself have lived pretty much all over Spokane, so I know all of the areas really, really well. So I might have more of a biased opinion as to what's my favorite, but um, so if you are, the school districts um, obviously are a big driver of that. Mead School District is one of the best school districts in all of Spokane, actually it is the best, but also through the state of Washington, it's also um, recognized and known as well, and that's gonna be up in the north part of Spokane, so that 30 minute commute to downtown Spokane. Okay. What about, compare the other school districts while we're on that for the family people, are they all good or just kind of some better than others or what? Um, I mean, honestly, all of Spokane has pretty good um, school districts, honestly. So um, you have out in the Valley, Central Valley uh, School District, and then on the South Hill, it's considered uh, District 81. Honestly, there's not really a bad school in Spokane County. Um, it's just some are preferred over the others. And then as far as preference goes, it's simply just because of what other, you know, um, electives they have or the sports programs, convenience of, you know, schools and stadiums and all that. But again, all of that is growing um, in all aspects of Spokane. So Liberty Lake, which is right on the bordering line of like Coast Falls, Idaho, um, they are building a high school and a middle school out there because of the growth. Um, on the north side, they're creating another middle school because of the growth. We need, you know, a third middle school on the north side. So there's growth happening in all of Spokane. <laughs> That's good. So, so um, I want to switch to, to the neighborhood, the, the, the connection you have with Idaho. But before I go there, I want to ask about um, the rental increase. One of our more sophisticated rent uh, attendees here wants to know, let's say you had a thousand dollar rent right now. Would you be mm -hmm. able to Survey and tell them what that would grow like over the next five years. Is it four percent for that thousand per year, or are the growth rates going to cause a higher amount of rental increase? Or do you have any idea? Um, yes, you could follow the trend of the growth rate, but I guess it also is going to come back to retention of good quality tenants. So um, that's one of the things that I think that has. It made Spokane such a desirable area to purchase for investments is because again that that rate um, for the housing market the vacancy is low your price point is you know at a definitely affordable price point but then your rents are also affordable too so um, I know many landlords and um, investment property owners they will do incremental increases so some of them will do it every six months some of them will do it every year so it really just depends and I think that if you're strategic with the way that you do that, you're going to retain those good solid tenants, um, but then also still making sure that your trend, you're following the trend of the, the increase of the rentals and then even, you know, if you were to sell as well. There was a huge lack of um, an increase for most of the rentals in Spokane, I would say, until probably the last two years, honestly, is when you've really seen the prices of rent go up that just never went up like I lived in a place years ago that I was there for four years and they never increased my rent not once so well, that's just really follow, quick I mean it was great for me but <laughs> they don't normally follow the trends you know I would say like some of the larger cities that you know follow the trends of growth but again I that really also comes finally back to the fact that it's so much easier to maintain a very comfortable living lifestyle in Spokane because it's not as expensive to live and reside here as it is in some of the other areas. So um, people kind of just get comfortable with where it's at. So. Yeah. Steph, we have about 10 minutes kind of scheduled in here. So I'm going to uh, move this onto a couple different things. Like, can you tell us what the affiliation between Spokane and Idaho is? Because it's right next door and you have Coeur d'Alene right across the border. Is that create any opportunities or is there a large difference people should know between the two areas or what? Um, I mean, I do get that question a lot. Um, prices, they're pretty similar as far as uh, what the average sales price is as far as like post falls go. Um, as far as what the laws, I don't even dabble in that because I don't like to. <laughs> um, Idaho is different than Washington, obviously, and so I don't like to advise on that front just because to help protect myself. Um, but I do know that there's definitely room for purchases over in um, Idaho as well because they're growing. And a lot of people will live in Idaho, but then work in Washington or work in Washington, live in Idaho. So we do get a lot of that too. Okay, good. 
So, so they, they support each other. They're kind of, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. They're both, yeah. they help each other out basically. Yes. Um, I myself am not licensed in Idaho, but I do have partnering agents that are. Um, so if that was ever something of an interest, then I have somebody readily available to help and assist with, you know, facilitating that sort of a transaction. Good. So I think we're convinced that Spokane is a stable and growing area and a pretty good opportunity for both first time home buyers and investors who are looking for it. Let's say yes. somebody wants to get a hold of you, Stephanie, and they're out of town or out of state or wherever. What's the easiest way to get a hold of you? And, and also, can you just talk through the process? So you kind of touched on it with your FaceTime thing of how they would deal with you and the transaction, everything from long distance to make sure they're comfortable buying real estate in Spokane. Yes, so I would highly encourage anybody who um, has any more questions um, is to call me, text me, or email me, whatever is you know suitable to them, um, and I will answer whatever questions you have. And as far as the process goes, um, if this is somewhere that you're interested in potentially investing in, I always encourage everyone to come and check out Spokane. It's great anyways, but if it's not um, feasible for you to get here beforehand, then I would definitely set aside at least a half an hour to an hour of phone conversation where I can just, um, you know, tell them more about Spokane, um, answer whatever questions they may have. And then basically then what I would do is set up a search that fits their needs and their criteria and then send them any listings that I do have readily available as well as what might be coming on the market soon. Um, and then having them look at options as far as either just paying cash or financing, obviously you being my preferred lender, I would highly encourage them to chat with you on that front just to see if they can diversify themselves more. And then once they find properties that they identify that they potentially like the numbers on, and then I will go and visually inspect the exterior of the property. And then most oftentimes I can get into them um, with that 24 to 48 hour notice and like I said do a visual walkthrough either through FaceTime or Facebook video, live video whichever it may be. Um, some of them I can't get into unless they have a signed around contract but I always put the verbiage in there as well that it's um, contingent upon the visual inspection of either the buyer or me as the agent and then we give the notification to then have the process move forward from there. And guys I'm going to speak to this. <laughs> Sorry, Steph. So I can kind of speak to this process a little bit because we have a client that um, was in Hawaii and, and I was working on the loan and Stephanie was the, the real estate agent and she showed them properties and it worked very well, this FaceTime thing. I remember walking her walking through a particular property and I was part of the FaceTime group to see that. And she showed them the property and the concerns and pointed out little things like that. And in that particular instance, the investor decided not to buy that particular property that she started that with because of that FaceTime and she was able to point out some, some issues with the property and everything like that. But they eventually did buy in Spokane a couple of units and they were really pleased with the whole process. I remember that very well. Yes. So Stephanie, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, like I said, call or text me, which um, I know that my phone number was on there, but I can also give it again. Go ahead and just tell. I don't have any can think any visual to put on the screen, so why don't you just tell okay. us what your contact info is? So phone number is five zero nine two eight zero four zero four eight, and then if you'd like to email, my email address is Stephanie Murphy, which is S T E F F A N I. M U R P H Y dot R E at gmail dot com. All right, and for ease of remembering this, can you repeat that one more time? Both your phone number and your email address, please. Yes, phone number again is 509 280 4048, and then email is phy dot re at gmail.com awesome stephanie you've been great today thanks for the information is there kind of anything you want to wrap up with here anything you, that we should remember and anything we didn't talk about um no other than spokane really truly is that little gem i totally feel like <laughs> um, just for investing or even just coming to visit and um, yeah, 
So if there's anybody that I can help, I would be happy to, and I look forward to chatting with everybody. Great. Well, Stephanie Murphy of Four Degrees Real Estate in Spokane, Washington, we thank you for your time and your expertise today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to stop the recording here now.